Hi, I'm Dana, and today I really wanted to talk about how parents react to late diagnosed autism. I can't think of a better way to phrase it, but it's one of those things that I've not seen anyone talk about, like even on Twitter. Like normally I see at least one tweet that sort of sparks me to think, hmm, people don't really talk about that. But I haven't seen anyone talk about this at all. And I've been having some struggles with my own parents. So I sort of want to see if anyone else has had similar experiences. I want to hear what other people's thoughts are, like, versus mine. You know, I think that opinions are best formed when you have other people's to, like, gain a better understanding from and, and educate yourself. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Obviously, all autistic people are different. All of our parents are different. And quite often, neurodivergency, like, runs in the family. So the chances are at least one of your parents are probably autistic or ADHD or that have something going on, you know? which can make it all the more difficult to have a relationship with them. I'm not the most comfortable with this topic and I don't want to end up oversharing with like my own personal private life. So I'm gonna be a little careful, but I just wanna get into it now. <laughs> I think one of the first things most of us do post-diagnosis is think back on our childhoods and go, oh, oh, I see, I see all these autistic traits now. I see all these signs and hints. And the thing that comes after that is no one noticed all of these very obvious signs and traits. Nobody. I had to like fully grow into adulthood, like noticing for myself that I had all of these autistic traits that were very obvious. And personally, my older brother's autistic. So it really felt to me like somebody probably should have noticed. Like you add enough to know like two plus two is the question. So what does that equal? You know, you should be able to figure it out, but they didn't. And, you know, that can lead to a lot of a sort of resentment and a lot of like, did you care? Did you not notice? Like, how did this happen? One of the big things that helped for me, like immediately post-diagnosis was talking through things like that with my mom and seeing what her perspective was. And my experience of that was relatively upsetting and not great, but I don't want to go into all of my personal stuff. But I'm also very aware that that's just my situation. And I think most people's parents wouldn't have had the education. They wouldn't, just wouldn't have known what to look for. Or they just noticed these things and were like, oh, my kid's quirky, nice, you know? A lot of parents just have a million and one different reasons for not noticing. My parents just had theirs. <laughs> I'm struggling with which, like, little thing on my list I want to go into next. So these two could go in either way. I'm, I'm not going to have a good lead into the subjects, I'm afraid. But it's realising like a big thing for me has been realising how much my childhood and the way that I was treated and the sort of family dynamic and my relationship with my parents has affected me in adulthood and it's a lot it's not great it's been a lot and I think that's the truth for most people you know there's most I don't know if I'm just on like the wrong side of Instagram or whatever but I feel like it seems like most people have like the generational trauma going on, like their parents were better than their parents were, but their parents were better than their parents were and so on. And now we're all having to deal with that. <laughs> but for me, it's been a lot of like really directly connecting the dots to like, oh, this specific thing is why I feel like this when this happens. It's, you know, when like in detective movies, when they have all of the pins with the strings, it's literally that. I've... I don't know if like I'm doing the right thing. I'm basically being my own therapist for the time being because I want to be a better person and my cat's knocking things off. But I want to be a better person and grow as a person and be healthier and be happy and blah, 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 blah. So I'm, I'm trying to work on stuff and I think it's probably something I should do. I think it's probably something most people should do because it's very much one of those things where once you're aware of it, you can sort of start working on it more. Like an example that I don't think is going too deep is that my brothers were eight and nine, and still are, eight and nine years older than me. So that I was very much just the annoying little sister, you know? And that's that's the trope that we see in TV shows and movies and everything. It's not uncommon to be the annoying kid sibling. But it meant that I was in school surrounded by kids that were picking on me and telling me I was annoying. I had many a friend that would tell me I was annoying. And then my brothers, who I like, desperately wanted validation from, also told me I was annoying. And all of their growing up really cool, mature friends also told me I was annoying. So now as soon as like anybody seems the least bit like they could be annoyed with me, I'm like, oh my God, I'm being annoying and they hate me and they want me to leave. And I'm going to have to like figure out an excuse that I can go because I need to be like, self-aware enough to know when I'm being annoying. But being able, <laughs> you know, and just feeling like that, 
it made me feel like I was annoying these people. I thought I was picking up on hints and social cues and knew that I was being annoying. But being able to connect it back to things like that, I can be like, oh no, it's, it's not me. It's that I have this like childhood trauma of being annoying. So now I worry about that. And it's something that like my inner child frets about. I don't know. I'm not a fucking therapist. Don't take any advice from this video. This is not an advice video at all. This is just my experience. <laughs> But you know, I, can, I, I know where that feeling's coming from now. So rather than assuming I am actually being annoying, I know it's that. And I can talk myself down and be better about it. Or even talk to the person about it if they're someone I'm close to, you know? But really getting back into parents, my dad had already died by the time I found out I was autistic. I don't know why I'm laughing, it was horrible. But it meant that I only had my mum about and it was very much a re-establishing of the relationship, I suppose. Because I was immediately like, this is such a relief. I'm so relieved. I feel like I can be more myself now. And my mum's reaction was, why are you being different? You're supposed to just be yourself. You've always been Dana. And th there was just a lot of misunderstandings and misinterpretations. And I felt a very heavy pressure to mask. And, you know, it's not, I don't want to have to mask around my own mother, basically. So trying to like establish boundaries and trying to actually be myself and just trying to have like a healthy relationship became a very difficult thing to do. And it's, I think that's hard in any sort of relationship or friendship or anything else. It's very difficult to re-establish boundaries and sort of re-establish who you are when they think that they know you so well. But when it's because you found out you're autistic, it's sort of a little more hurtful because it sort of comes from more of a place of ignorance and misunderstanding and those things and it's one of those of like you're the person that forced me to be alive could you not at least try to like educate yourself a little listen to me i'm trying to help you learn could you not pay a little bit of attention put a little bit of empathy and care in no no okay and it's very hard and i'm talking about it like it's general even though it is just my experience because i feel like other people must have had this kind of thing go down I don't know, I hope so. I hope I'm not just massively oversharing on the internet. But that leads me into like, I think my final point, unless I have another big tangent, which is that like trying to create that change is so frustrating and hard, and especially if the other person's unwilling. And like I said at the start, towards the start, I think most of our parents also have issues and should probably be doing this therapy and working on themselves and probably should have done it before they started popping out babies to live in the world. But that's a, that's not even a different video topic, it's just me being bitter and cynical. But having to try to nurture change with someone that's your parental figure, this whole thing can be applied to parental figures by the way, it doesn't have to be about like your parents or your mum, but like specifically trying to cultivate a change and make things different, not only is things changing, which I hate. I don't like change, I don't like difference. So it's already really scary and anxiety inducing and something I'm kind of reluctant to do even though I knew it was necessary kind of thing. But then you've also got to figure out which things you actually want to change and how to go about asking for them to change. And it, for me, became sort of like I was parenting, you know, the parent situation became the other way around. It wasn't great anymore and it wasn't healthy. And I think, it can be a struggle to maintain healthy relationships with your parents anyway, in my experience from the people I know. I think it becomes even more difficult when you're trying to have to like, pretend to be someone else around them, while also having all these like life-changing, alter view-altering realizations of like who you are as an autistic person now that you know you're autistic. Because it's already hard enough finding that out. <laughs> and I don't want this to be entirely me oversharing about my life on the internet. So I do want to approach other situations that I've seen and things that I've noticed because I'm so observant apparently now. But I've known quite a few different like autistic and other neurodivergent people at this point in my life. And I feel like I have like reasonably good, it not insight perhaps, but I've been told stories and heard things basically. So I want to talk about that a little without exposing anyone. So I had one friend a long, long while ago who had been diagnosed with a neurodivergency and Again, I don't want to expose anyone, so I'm not going to go into what it was. But they decided not to tell their parents at all because they knew that their parents would just be like, no, you're not, don't be silly, you're fine, grow up. 
which is horrible. And I'm really, really fucking sorry if any of you have gone through that because no one should be invalidating you like that. It's dead shit. But I also think from having spent a good amount of time around their parents, that, that comes from a place of them being like, but all of the things you tell us are this neurodivergency related are things that we do too. And we're normal, we're fine. So you must be. When in reality, it's that they also have the same neurodivergency. So I think that's the type of situation where you sort of just got to figure out if you're going to go in for the fight and if it's worth the battle to educate them and see if they come around or just stay quiet. And both are very difficult. I'm not envious of your position. <laughs> Good luck, like I said, this isn't an advice video. I'm just sorry, I guess, even though I'm sure you don't want my... I'm not pitying you. It's just shit and I'm acknowledging that. Moving on. I think a lot of people, from what I've seen online and from what I know of friendships that I've got, a lot of people's parents also start to infantilise them more and sort of see it as like, oh my gosh, our baby, our poor little baby is autistic. We've got to like, look after them all over again. When that's obviously not the case. You know, there's so much talk of mental age and stuff when it comes to autism, so I, I'm sure people have, like, Googled, like, how old is my, like, 30-year-old autistic daughter, really, and been told that she's actually 12. How how are you letting her live alone? But it's, it's just... I don't think it's real, basically, personally. Sorry to doctors and scientists or whatever, but I think that the way that people who are autistic work, there's no way to, like, put in a mental age because in some areas they'll have the mental age of like an astrophysicist that, that's already stu studied at Harvard and Oxford, you know? And in other areas, yeah, they are a bit more immature and childlike. And that, like, what, are you going to even it out to make them 40? Like, no, it doesn't work. But, but for both people that were late diagnosed and people that were diagnosed in childhood, I have seen a lot of parents just immediately infantilise them and act like they're still little, little children that need to be protected. And I think that's one of those things where, you know, it comes from a place of love. It comes from a place of wanting you to be okay and wanting to make sure that you're okay being protective and probably feeling like they have some sort of role in being the person that needs to look after you. you know, there's probably a whole bunch of stuff. And I think that regardless of if it's from a place of love or not, whatever the intention is, it, it's got to be bloody annoying. I hate being infantilised by anyone. It must be incredibly frustrating from your own parents. Um... Again, I'm not giving advice, I'm just sort of acknowledging other people's situations because I want to hear different points of view and stories. I want to create a discussion about this because I've not seen one and I want to read about... I want to be nosy about other people's parental situations without disclosing my own, essentially. <laughs> I do kind of want to go fully in depth because I'm a petty little bitch, but it would be rude to the real people in my life. And it would just be oversharing, I'd embarrass myself. So we're going to stick with what we've got and go with this. This is the video, apparently. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. Hearing about my childhood trauma must be... <laughs> no, it's fine if you did enjoy it. I'm not... I'm only playing. Um, I'd love to read any comments that you want to leave. Please do comment, please. This is what I'm looking for with this video specifically. I want comments, okay? It's not for the algorithm. It's for my own peace of mind. Um, it's okay if you don't feel comfortable commenting, though. I don't comment on anything either. Um, my links are all down below, like usual. Be lovely if you wanted to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I am monetized now, so if you want to, like, leave my playlist on in the background and make me a millionaire. <laughs> but no, I've, I've had a horrible day, to be quite honest, so I'm going to go now. Whoever you are and wherever you are, I hope you're having a lovely morning, evening, day, afternoon, week, month, year. And I'll see you again in a few days.